49ers beat the Rams once again. I'm Al Sacco with Brian Rennick for the 49ers Web Zone. No Huddle Podcast, part of the Odyssey family. This was a game that maybe didn't quite go the way that we thought, and I'm not sure the 49ers uh, had their fastball today, but they still get the job done. They still beat the Rams. They still put up 30 points. And Brian and I are going to break it down for you. Uh, before we do, we do want to say – Moving forward, it's just going to be me and Brian on the show. Um, decided with uh, Zane is going to go in a different direction, so he's no longer going to be on the show with us. So just going to be me and Brian for now, and we'll see how it goes. Maybe we had a third person. Maybe we don't. Just see what happens. So we're going to kind of take it from there. But for now, it's just, you're just stuck with – they're just stuck with me and you, Brian. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a, it's a loss, and, uh, you know, I <clears throat> I know that I got my start on here, if you will uh last summer uh, i know that you were uh last summer not this past summer but the summer previous right the summer before the 2022 season um you just had a lot on your plate and so um i know that i had filled in a few times with zane and then um you know we ended up deciding to do the three man weave and you know we had all of last season and it was a lot of fun and you know zane just zane has a young family and and a a job and just things kind of, uh, you know, sometimes you, you just got to leave space for other things. And so um, I am going to, to miss seeing his face on here. Uh, but, you know, we don't know what holds for the future, but uh, he will be missed. And uh, it will be just you and I. And hopefully that doesn't, uh, that doesn't send some people away. Uh, I think most of them are here for you anyway. So I think we should be good. Oh, uh, I don't, I don't know about that. I think people are kind of sick of hearing my mouth at this point. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think another voice would, would be a, would, would be a good change of pace for people, but I don't know. Anyway, this game, Brian was not what I expected it to be started no. out. The defense didn't look very good, but here, here's when, I, when I'm watching these games and I'm taking notes and I'm thinking about the show, I'm always like, what is the story? What is the mm -hmm. story of this game? Who is the story of this game? What are we going to talk about? And I guess the main thing I came away with from this game is that the 49ers are just really good. And yeah. even when they're they have maybe their B minus game, most teams in the league are going to have to be nearly perfect to beat them. And yeah. you have your higher end teams, your Dallas is your Philadelphia's uh, in the AFC. We know there's, well, they're not, they're not all of them look like it right now, but usually your Kansas City is your Cincinnati is your Buffalo's. Yeah. Some higher end teams there. But the rest of the league, when they play the 49ers, they're going to have to bring their A-plus game. Because I thought mm -hmm. the Rams gave them all they could handle for as long as they could before eventually the 49ers just overwhelm you. And they just yeah. they just take over. The defense yeah. isn't going to play poorly for 60 minutes. The offense right now is not making mistakes. You have to bring your A game, A-plus game to beat this team. And if you don't, it's going to look like today. You may hang around for a little while, but at the end of the day, the Niners are going to win. And that's why I kind of going from – thinking this is an 11 and 12 win team to thinking this might be a 13 and 14 win team. I, I just think they're that good and they're that complete and there's enough there to when other things aren't working, they can pick it up in other areas to win games. You know, I think we talked about it in the preview that when the Rams played the Seahawks last week, the Rams came out with a game plan that you come out with when you recognize that you are at a talent disadvantage. And it felt like they came out with the same game plan against the 49ers, which was we are going to do everything we can to get the ball out as quickly as possible. It really feels like game plans that Kyle Shanahan put together, you know, years ago when it came to facing the Rams with Aaron Donald, with, you know, with that that really stout defense that they had at the time, uh, you know, it was get the ball out quick, you know, hit them on the edges. Right. And that's what the that's what the Rams were doing specifically. We're not trying to hit chunk plays. We are trying to beat you with a thousand paper cuts. And that's what they were doing in the first half. And, you know, one of the things that I thought was interesting was. You know, the 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 thing that I noticed most was just how soft they were playing and off coverage in that first half. And they were getting absolutely dominated and the reason is because they want to play zone because they trust that their defensive line is going to get home and put pressure on the quarterback and in that first half that wasn't happening and so steve wilkes and that defensive staff had to go in at halftime and make some adjustments both in the passing game 
and in uh you know in defending the run i believe it was fred warner uh after the game said that one of the adjustments that they made were some really well-timed and well-placed run blitzes that seemed to help kind of knock the rams off of you know off of uh the rhythm that they were in but also they started playing a little bit more man because the because wilk started sending blitzes because the defensive line wasn't getting home and so you know ultimately they made the adjustments that they needed to but they i think they were underprepared in the first half for what the rams were going to bring and then you add to that the fact that the defensive line wasn't getting home like you expect them to and those zones got picked apart and Kyle Shanahan even said the same thing so like I said, you know, it was a game plan. I, Sean McVay's coaching his ass off down there right now. You know, he really is. Um, that is a a team full of no names outside of Matthew Stafford and Aaron Donald. Uh, and, you know, they gave the 49ers all they can handle. And, and maybe the 49ers went into this game a little bit like the Seahawks did their game. Like, well, there's no way that this team's going to beat us because look who we have and look who we they have. Uh, in fact, I think. I believe it was, I can't remember who, who, who said the quote. Um, it might've been Ayuk. It might've been Juwan Jennings. I'm not sure who, but I believe one of the pass catchers said like, I can't even name any, I, I can't name a single person on that defense. Now, obviously I don't know if that's a little bit of shade to Aaron Donald or, or it was just, Oh yeah, I forgot Aaron Donald was on there, but Hey, by the way, did Aaron Donald play today? Not sure. Cause he didn't do anything. He did which once today. again, once again, Kyle Shanahan, knows how to drop a game plan to neutralize Aaron Donald. So, uh, you know, it, it, it was a sloppy game, but in the end, they still put up 30 points and they picked Matthew Stafford off twice. And that was the difference in the game. And, and maybe the Rams are just a little better than people thought they were. I think be. so too. Yeah. You know, we know Sean McVay is a, a terrific coach. We know that we know Matthew Stafford's a, a good quarterback. He had a couple of turnovers today. He, he turns the ball over. He, he, does, he but does. We know that he makes a lot of plays too. And maybe yeah. they just have some guys, Puka Nakua, 15 catches today for 147 yards, and the Niners didn't really have an answer for it. He was just kind of, you know, going underneath and catching balls, and it, it, it didn't seem like they were able to adjust to him. Tutu Atmo looks Cooper like he's stepping up. I was like, but that's year. what Cooper Cup does to the 49ers as well. He just is in the Cooper Cup role, and it, it just feels like that offense is built around getting the slot receiver the ball. And yeah. Cup is yeah. out, so Nakua is in that role. And, and he's now he has what 25 catches to start his his career like it's wild but that's what that offense is yeah and, and maybe they just you know they've identified some guys and they're going to be a little bit better and we've said that on the show before the rams probably aren't going to suck as much as you think they're going to suck i don't yeah. think they're going to win 11 games or 10 games or anything like that but they may hover around 500 they may be able to do that so they might be a little bit better better than we thought but I guess for me in this game, the, the defense came out and it, it didn't look great in the first half. No. But I thought the offense did. And Purdy missed a couple of, of I think there were three throws that. Three, yeah. Two of them could have been touchdowns, longer throws mm -hmm. that, that, that he just missed. One was to Debo mm -hmm. that would have been a touchdown for sure. Another one was to IU, also would have mm -hmm. been a touchdown. And then he missed Jennings to, for a longer throw in the middle of the field. Yeah. But despite that, I thought he played really, Purdy played really well. And the offense, yeah. again, it's just. That, pick your poison with with all the guys that they have and even Ayuk, it looks like he's going to be okay kyle shanahan said it's not serious but he hurt his neck shoulder area so he wasn't 100 percent. he was on and off the field um so even without him you know again you still put up 30 points um and i the biggest thing for me i think with purdy was when it was 17 to 10 and you're going to the end of the half and right the niners don't look niners don't look good the defense is not looking good the rams were going up and down the field now you're the end of the it's the end of the half. The Rams are going to get the ball back to start the second half. And Purdy again was he was just calm. There's just a calming presence that I thought he had for the offense. And he helps drive them downfield. And again, you have Debo and Christian McCaffrey, and we'll, we'll get into those guys in the games that they had. But he just had that really calming presence bring him down the field. And then Brian, again, what sticks out to me, we talk about the trust that Kyle Shanahan has in him. When there's one second left or two seconds left, whatever it was. He doesn't kick the field goal down 17 yeah. to 10. He puts the ball in Purdy's hands again, and the QB sneaks into the end zone because he yep. trusts his quarterback. He's doing things with this offense that, in, in terms of being aggressive, that he never did with Jimmy Garoppolo because he didn't trust Jimmy Garoppolo. He, he didn't. He didn't trust Jimmy Garoppolo not to turn the ball over. 
and he trusts Purdy, and, and it's good to see, and the, the teammates trust him. And and even in a game where I thought I thought Purdy was fine, I thought he, got, I thought he played okay, but he missed he missed mm-hmm. some throws. I mean, the Niners probably could have put forty in this game if he hit throws. So in yes. a game that might have been a B B minus game for Purdy, again they score points, they move the ball. He doesn't turn the ball over. He's calm. So at this point, he, this is ten games now, and eight of those ten they've hit thirty points. And I know the defense turnovers help with that. Any team that's scoring a lot is getting the ball in probably advantageous situations, right? It's not like, well, okay, this team puts up 35 points a game and every drive is 80 yards, 75 yards with big play. No, they get turnovers and things happen throughout the course of a game. So that's going to be part of putting up points. It just is. So anybody who says like, oh, well, the defense put them in a position to score that last, whatever. It's fine. That happens in the course of a game. Bottom line is eight of 10 games, 30 plus points at this point. It's not a coincidence. It's he is a very good quarterback. This is a very good offense. We'll get into the McCaffrey and Debo stuff because I thought they were both really good today. We expected Debo to be. But again, with Purdy, you just have to be even in a road game for a young quarterback where he wasn't at his best. He was still really good and better than what the Niners have had in a while. Well, not only that, but, you know, the 49ers went into the half. Um tied at 17 so they scored 17 of their 30 points in the first half they only scored 13 in the second half they got both of their turnovers in the second half that first interception came with four minutes and 35 seconds left in the third quarter and that guy that gave them the ball in their own 28 that was their best starting field position of the day uh that today so um at or up to that point i should say so you're right you know teams that score a lot of points tend to also turn the ball over meaning that they get turnovers not or force turnovers not not give the ball away but they didn't do that until like i said almost the end of the third quarter so they scored 17 points with really bad field position as well which again is is just indicative of what this offense is doing and you know one of the things that we talked about in the preview was how good the Rams were on third down conversions against the uh, against the Seahawks and how, you know, they weren't going to experience that same level of success. Well, they were still 7 of 14 against the 49ers. That's 50%. That's a lot better than most teams are on third down. 49ers were 2 of 9. They only converted 2 of their 9 uh, third down. So, was this game good? No. You know, is there are there things to pull or things to pull from this game where we might say, hey, we're a little bit concerned about this? Absolutely. But in the end, the 49ers are 2 0. They sit atop the NFC West. They've beaten the, the Rams. Um, the Seahawks won against the Lions today in overtime, but still don't look like a team that necessarily the 49ers should be threatened by. So, you know, it, it, these are the kind of games where it's like it feels it feels almost wrong to nitpick because they won and they put up 30 points and, you know, they beat a, a division rival and all of that. But I feel like this team, like you said, we're at the point now where it really is. You are analyzing this team through a lens of can they win the Super Bowl? You're not analyzing the Rams through the lens of can they win the Super Bowl, right? Right. You are doing that with the 49ers. And so if that's the lens through which you're analyzing, you do have to take a step back and go, okay, well, what are some things that could get in the way of that? And last week it was right tackle. I feel like uh, the right side of the line performed a lot better today. Um, the only time that Aaron Donald really had was, was his name was even mentioned was on a rush against Colton McKivitz, but he did not get to the quarterback. In fact, Purdy was able to step up in the pocket and make a make a throw. I, I don't think that was the Juwan Jennings overthrow. I believe that was a completion that he made. But the right side of the line looks better. Um, the big concern for me coming out of this game, you know, it, I guess it's not even a concern. The The defensive line had a, had a poor game. I don't think that's mm-hmm. going to be something that will be a consistent theme for this team. And I, I just really do believe, and, and Nick Bosa kind of said it in the in the post game. This is preseason for Nick Bosa, right? He he didn't have a camp, he didn't have a preseason. He still needs to get in football shape, and he's that's not going to take him as long as it is going to take others. But you know, he even said like, I just needed kind of two games to really 
get back into the flow of the game, get back into football shape. And I'm there now. And I liked my production today. And I think I'm just going to go up from there. And I agree. So, you know, uh, is the secondary concern? Yes and no. Again, the whole the whole philosophy of this defense is build a ferocious defensive line that will get to the quarterback, play zone behind it, because that's what you do when you have a ferocious defensive line. If you can't get to the quarterback, if you can't cause pressure, that's when you play man because you've got to start bringing blitzes and things like that. And while they did that in the second half, I don't necessarily think that's always something that they're going to have to do. So I'm not super concerned about it right now. Uh, I would say, hopefully, I, I think Brandon Ayuk probably got a stinger uh, based on kind of how he was feeling. I would assume that that's what that was. So I, I'm not really, I don't think there's any injury concerns. Uh, the one thing that I thought was was good was to see Isaiah Oliver really take control of that nickel cornerback spot with his game today. He, he um, made a couple big plays today. Huge big plays. plays. Yeah. After, after so, whiffing on a tackle, he came back. Right. Right. I, I thought know, he, his, the tackle he made coming out of the half on third down to stop huge, the Rams, that huge. helped change the momentum to me. That was yeah. a huge tackle. It might have been on Kyron yep. Williams. Um, it was, yeah. Thir third down, passing the flat. He comes up, he makes a big stick. He had another big tackle later. I, I, I thought he made some big plays there, and they needed him to do that. They needed to change the momentum, and he yeah. did that there. So so that was huge. And the Niners, whatever adjustments they made in the, in, in the second half, the defense came out and played a lot better. They got a punt, an interception, a three and out, um, a field goal, an interception, and then I believe a field goal at, at, right at the end of the game there. I don't know why McVay did that. I guess it didn't matter. But um, I know why McVay did that. Sean McVay had money covering the spread? Game, obviously. Yeah, the huh. spread was seven and a half. The 49ers oh, was it really? seven and a half. Oh, that stuff kills yeah. me. And they won by seven. Off bridges for that after that. Oh, the amount of money lost on that field goal. That's going to be on, on ESPN tonight. On Scott Van Pelt's bad beats, a hundred percent that's going to be on there because that I was like, is why a are you, the terrible gonna beat. Run out? Why even bother? Like, what are you doing? Right, there was no reason for them to do it, and they still did. And it, it, it honestly, it feels like because it's better on the ego to lose by seven to this team than to lose by ten. <laughs> like, maybe. legitimately, there's really like, how else do you explain it? I don't know that you can. So it was a it was yeah. a weird decision. But like yeah, you said, sure. we're we're judging this team now by Super Bowl. That's it. That that's it. They they feel to me, and I'm going to keep saying this. This feels very 1994 ish to me with this team, and, and just in terms of it. Again, it's not a specific team they're trying to get over the hump. Like that '94 team was trying to get over the hump of the Cowboys. Yeah. This team is just trying to get over the hump of them getting you know over that championship and winning a championship. That's 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 where they are with this. And it yeah. just again, it feels like they understand the assignment. Like you said, the nitpicking isn't like oh, can this team can this team make the playoffs? Like we're nitpicking like like big picture. In the defensive right. line, yeah, they they definitely didn't have a good first half. And the Rams were throwing the ball quickly, but when also when they didn't, they had time. It's not like there was any pass rush whatsoever in the first half, and it improved a little bit in the yeah. second half. But like you said, Bosa for all everybody thought that he was a robot and coming back in, he's going to be great. No, of course it's going to take him some time to ramp back up, and we're seeing that right now. And when he's not an absolute game wrecker, of course it's going to affect everything else. Um, you hope Hargrave and Armstead are going to push that pocket in the middle, but the other defensive ends are are, are worrisome. We, we, we don't know what Jackson's going to do over the season. We don't know what Farrell's going to do. That's that's a worrisome spot. So they can get away with it today. Again, we're not worried about can they get away with it against the Giants and the Cardinals. Yeah, they're going to probably be fine. We're worried about can they get away with it in January when they have to beat the Cowboys, when they have to beat the Eagles, when they have to beat one of the juggernauts in the AFC. That That's kind of what we're worried about with that. But you know, we'll look at it week to week until then. But most of the teams the Niners play, man, I'm sorry. They're just – it's going to be hard. The Niners just have too much talent. And today was a good a good example of it when Brandon Ayuk, who started out the game, you know, again, he makes a nice catch. He starts out the game kind of hot, and you're like, all right, he's going to get rolling. He gets hurt, and then he really, you know, again, just wasn't on the field. Like, he wasn't himself. He was, he was in pain, obviously. He ended up with three catches for 43 yards. But you just have and, – and George Kittle only had three catches for 30 yards. He hasn't broken out yet. But we talked about how good Debo Samuel has been against the Rams. He has another really strong day today. Six catches for 63 yards, five carries for 38 yards, and a touchdown. And some of those carries looked like passes. They might have just been a little bit behind the lines. So they the rushing rush. touchdown The rushing touchdown that he got was that it looked like a swing pass, but it was slightly behind. So that, that counted as a run, which means that Brock Purdy didn't throw a touchdown 
In yeah, I thought I, they did. They originally market a touchdown. Or a touchdown they did pass? originally give it to him, and then they took. That's it what away. I thought. Yeah. And then Christian McCaffrey again, twenty carries, one hundred and sixteen yards, and a fourteen yard touchdown. He had a fifty one yard run. He catches three balls for nineteen yards. I wonder if if <laughs> if they could go back in time and they knew what Christian McCaffrey was going to do with Kyle Shanahan if they would have pulled like. Remember when the uh, Chris Paul got traded to the Lakers and the NBA was just like no. <laughs> You're not going to do that. Right. Like, right. I wonder if the NFL yeah, would want This wanted. seems unfair. You can't have him. Uh, trade yeah. for somebody else, Kyle. You cannot give me Christian McCaffrey. Because he's just been <laughs> – the guy's a cheat code in this offense. He's going to – he, I think, offensive player of the year, definitely. He might even be able – it's tough for anybody, not a non-quarterback, to win MVP, but he might be able sure. to at least be in the conversation. Like, I think he's been that good of a season if he stays healthy. The one thing, Brian, he's, he's touching the ball a lot. Too much. Too, too much. much. Eli Mitchell, did he even get on the field today? He didn't have, he didn't have a touch. No, I. Jordan Mason, fact, there's just times, yeah. and I understand you're trying to win the game today, and it was in doubt. I, I get all that. Last week, we had said, you know, th- that it was a 30 to 7 game. They got to find ways to spell him a little bit for sure. Um, does that say missing? Brian's holding yeah, up. Yeah, uh, I created that. Sure. I created it at the end of the game. It's a milk carton with Elijah Mitchell. Missing in action. You like missing, it, so. like, but they're just going to have to find it's a long season. I do, you know, we don't want him to have 400 touches and then go into the playoffs. And then, you know, next year it has its toll. So the guy's amazing, but let's, let's spell him a little bit, please. Yeah. And that's, I think if I'm being honest, that is the biggest takeaway from this game for me in terms of what needs to change moving forward. There needs to be more rotation at the running back position. Mm -hmm. You've got Elijah Mitchell. You've got Christian McCaffrey, right? Jordan Mason. You've got Jordan Mason. You've got TDP who was who didn't dress for this game. He was inactive, but but still, you've got you've got talent in the running side of CMC. Use it. Give him a break, right? Like especially, and that was a thing that I didn't understand. You know that last that last possession where they were just trying to ice the game. Why is Elijah Mitchell not in there doing taking those carries? Like what? Right. I mean, what is what is the? Why are you? Why are you exposing Christian McCaffrey to a potential injury, right? When you've got Elijah Mitchell and last year, that's what you did. You iced games with Elijah Mitchell. That was your plan. I'm, it's just, I wonder, I don't think anybody has asked him yet. I would love for one of the beat reporters to ask him, Hey, you know why last year you were using Elijah, Elijah Mitchell to ice games prior to him going down with another injury. But prior to that, you were using him to ice games and, you know, through two weeks, Christian McCaffrey has, I think, 50 touches. That's a lot. Like, that's too much. Mm-hmm. Too much for a guy that you need fresh and ready to go to win that Super Bowl. You need him in the postseason. Don't don't wear him out, you know, the first eight weeks of the season. So, to me, that's the biggest thing to take away from this is I'd like to see more rotation at the running back position. And it'll be interesting to see what happens because their next game is Thursday. It's a short turnaround. Yeah. They're playing the Giants. It's their home opener. Uh, they get to play on Levi's, which, by the way, I was at Levi's last night for the Ed Sheeran concert. And let me just say that was a, an incredible experience. Um, but, yeah, your home opener is four days away now. I'd like to see Elijah Mitchell more in that game against the Giants. Uh, and and let Christian McCaffrey rest a little bit because through these first two games, fifty touches I think is 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 too many for him uh, when he is the focal point of your offense. In terms of as long as he's on the field, we can walk onto any field I think against any defense and like our chances of of putting up twenty plus points or yeah you know and if it's not a top ten defense, I like our chances of putting up thirty plus points. So McCaffrey has 268 rushing yards through the first two games. Uh, it's the second most in Niners franchise history through the first two games. Garrison Hurst holds uh, the mark with 325 yards in 1998. And, uh, Nick Wagoner tweeted that. So that's, you know, listen. He's, is that he's, is that the is that the season where they opened up against the Jets and Garrison yeah, Hurst had a 98-yard yep. run to, to yep. win the game? And that I think where Kyle's had's at, like, I, I just think – Fans think like we're worried about him getting hurt. I don't know that Kyle thinks that way. Kyle brought up the, oh, he the Lions game. Was it 2012, 
2021 where they were up 20, whatever and the Lions came 2021, back. 2021, yeah. So that's in his head, right? Sure. I don't know that that's same. <laughs> I mean, that was that was a one-off thing, but I think that's in his head. So he just feels like, you know, this game's in doubt. He's my bet. He's might be our best player. We want to put the ball in his hands. We don't want to take him off the field. And, and, and I get that. But again, it's a bigger, it's a bigger goal here, right? Like you want to win the Super Bowl. So we'll, we'll see yes. what he does. It's early in the season. He didn't play in the preseason. Maybe he's That's just riding as early point. as, you know, yeah. as, as the season goes on, he'll have a few games where he gets 15 touches, 13 touches, that sort of thing. And that, then it all evens out. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but you know, he, he's been pretty incredible. Also George Kittle, I wrote it down. He's the fastest 49er to 400 receptions ever. He did it in 84 games Wild. and Roger Craig and Jerry Rice did it in 85. So yeah, again, Kittle who seems like an afterthought in the offense. A lot of times now it just shows you how the big seasons that he had to be able to, to get those receptions. And obviously yeah. right, Rice played in a different era. If Rice played in this era, he might've had 400 catches in his first two seasons, <laughs> but you know, first yes. two and a half seasons, whatever. But um, what Kittle's done has been amazing. And I think too, with Kittle, he's a superstar and he's had seasons where he's put up huge numbers. He's, he's, I mean, I guess when you get paid $18 million, you can deal with anything, but he's gone sort of in the background and he doesn't complain. He catches his few balls. He blocks, he lets Ayuk and Debo and McCaffrey. And he's just, you know, he's a good teammate and he, he does what he yeah. asks him to do. And he's a leader. And, and that's, that's really cool, man. He's going to go down as an all yeah. 49er and, when you have oh, someone who's a star who's, who's willing to do that and take a back seat for the better of the team, you know, you don't see that a lot. There's a lot of get me the damn ball, especially with receivers, and, and he's not doing that. Um, still one of the better time that tight ends out there. It's not like there's tight ends other than Kelsey having crazy productions every week, production every week, but um, props to him, man. He's had a wonderful yeah. career with this team. Well, and and uh, my buddy Tim and I were talking today, and he's like, "What? how is it that Andy Reid can get so many opportunities for Travis Kelsey, but Kyle Shanahan can't get those for for George Kittle, and, That's and my point. response was because Andy Reid and the Chiefs don't expect Travis Kelsey to block ever. Travis Kelsey is a glorified massive slot receiver, yeah. which is why he's wildly successful in that in that scheme. And George Kittle is asked to do a lot more on the field than Travis Kelsey is for a team that is a run first team versus a pass first team like the Chiefs. And so, you know. Travis Kelsey is incredible. I love Travis Kelsey. I love watching him play football. I love him and his brother. It bothers me that they're both, they're on two teams that I really don't like for obvious reasons in the Chiefs and the Eagles. But if you haven't watched the Kelsey doc on Amazon Prime, you should do yourself a favor and watch that. That is a documentary uh, following Jason Kelsey that they filmed last year because they were they wanted to film a documentary of someone who was playing the, what what they thought was going to be their last season in the NFL and kind of what that looks like and the transition away from the game. And then the Eagles had the year that they had and it became a totally different documentary. But like the last 15 minutes of the documentary are, are after their Super Bowl loss and just very powerful, uh, very powerful television. So like I said, do yourself also, a favor. What is, that? what is it on Amazon? It's on Amazon Prime and it's just called Kelsey. Oh, I'll have very to check good. it out. Okay. Very cool. good. Yeah. I didn't even know that was a um, thing. Yeah. And then their their podcast, uh, I think it's called New Heights with Jason and Travis Kelsey. It's top notch. <laughs> it's those two dudes. I think they'd be a lot of fun to hang out with. But outside of that, outside yeah. of Travis Kelsey, we got we got I got sidetracked there. You know, I think for George Kittle, like I said, he's just asked to do more. And his 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 addition to the offense or, or what he provides the offense doesn't always show up on the stat sheets and it doesn't make him any less of a player. It just, you know, he's not going to get the glorified stats that Travis Kelsey does. He's going to have his games where he does, but yeah, those aren't going to be almost every game like it is for Travis Kelsey, you know, and, and, and we, we, you know, we kind of brought it up that th this was a B minus game, if you will, for the, for the team, you know, you look at that stat sheet, and George Kittle didn't do anything. Debo Samuel had a touchdown. You predicted a Debo Samuel game. I would argue you were right, right? In terms of, of offensive production, it was really Christian McCaffrey on the ground and Debo Samuel. Ayuk had a quiet game. Uh, you know, Jennings had a quiet, right? And you look at it and you go, and they still put up 30 points. 
Like that's mm-hmm. the wild part about it is that they are star studded and most of their stars didn't get involved and they still put up 30. So again, you know, you go into every game now. I, I don't know at this point the way that this team is playing. I don't know that there's a game that they go into where they shouldn't be favored. You know, that that week five matchup against Dallas is going to be a, a hell of a game, but they should still be favored because they're the home team. They'll get mm-hmm. that home team three point or two and a half point, uh, you know, bump, if you will, and they will likely be favored. And both of those teams are likely going to go into that game or no. So, you know, obviously week to week, you've got to look at injuries, things like that. They've already lost mm-hmm. Samuel Womack for six to eight weeks with an MCL sprain that occurred in practice. And so they had to elevate uh, a guy from the practice squad. It would have been nice to have just Deshaun Jameson, but unfortunately he's not, he's on someone else's team now, but um, you know, it, this team, this team is, is this see, I'm so I'm very grateful to be a 49ers fan because this season is going to be a lot of fun. And I think they keep it rolling against the giants on Thursday night. You know, we're, we're probably not going to have a full on uh, preview because it is a Thursday night game, but they play the giants Thursday night home opener. The giants started the season uh, scoreless through their first six quarters. And then the defensive wizard that is Jonathan Gannon and the Arizona Cardinals <laughs> gave up 31 points in the second half to that giants team, uh, which is wild. Uh <laughs> The Cardinals went into halftime up 20 to nothing and they lost that game 31 to 28. So uh, kudos to Jonathan Gannon, the tanking and style, making it at least look competitive yeah. until the very end so that, you know, Caleb Williams ends up donning the uh, white and crimson. But but yeah, this this Giants team, you know, it's it's not very different from the team that made it to the playoffs last year. And I think that says more about their season last year than it does this year in that very much like the Vikings, that team seems a little fraudulent. Again, we're two weeks in. It is what it is. I I just don't see any way that this team doesn't put up 30-plus points and and hold this team down. Um, Daniel Jones is not Matthew Stafford. Uh, And that's really what it was with the Rams, right? The Rams have a Mm -hmm. fighting chance in every game they're in because they have Sean McVay and they have Matthew Stafford. Yeah, I mean, that's the reality of the situation. Really, really, really good quarterback. Very good though. quarterback. Yeah. Is he gonna is he gonna throw interceptions? Absolutely, but yeah, he's also always has. more often than not going to make up for it in other ways. Did he today? Uh, I mean, he threw for 305 yards, he had a touchdown. But without Matthew Stafford, that game is disgustingly ugly. So, you know, they're gonna have a a, a, a fighter's chance in every game they're in because Sean McVay is a hell of a coach and Matthew Stafford's a great quarterback. The Giants have Daniel Jones. I mean, Daniel Jones is Daniel Jones. I don't have a whole lot to say about him. Um, and Saquon Barkley hurt his ankle, I doubt. I would yeah. be shocked if he plays Especially with this kind of turnaround and the fact shocked. that they have to travel to the West Coast. So, shocked. Yeah, so that offense if, doesn't – yeah. You know what I can't wait for is the Cardinals to go like 1-16 this year, and then Caleb Williams is like, nah, I'm going back to school. I'm good. Uh, he's I making, would love that, actually. Because he's making his money, whatever. <laughs> yes, right? they can make their money. NIL money, yeah. Yeah, so it's he, not like he has he hinted at that, about, by the way. Um, say it again. He's hinted at that, by the way. He has hinted yeah, that. Yeah, so if, it's not like he's, you know, coming out and I need this comment. Yeah. Go back to school and then wait yeah. for somebody else. Like, I, oh, I yep. can't wait for that. I would love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not worried. Again, I think this week and next week, you got the Giants, the Cardinals. I, I, Niners are going to, they're going to be two easy wins. And then you're going into that Dallas game, like you said, just. 4 0, probably both of them. It's just going to be yeah. just a fucking heavyweight fight. I cannot it's wait. Be phenomenal. Because again, Sunday Dallas, I'm not knocking Philly. I think Philly's, Philly's looked a little yeah. disjointed early, but I think they're going to get it together. Yeah. But Dallas, to me, again, I think they have, they have a purpose. They're, they're front, Michael Parsons is out of his mind. They made a really good Jets defense look pretty pedestrian today. And um, their front, they, I mean, Zach Wilson sucks, but their they front did. just destroyed them. But the one thing that I thought was interesting is they put up 31 points, right? Did they put up? Th- no. It was like 30. They put up? 30. Yeah, they put up 30 points, but they only scored two touchdowns. Right? They scored a touchdown. The second touchdown, they went for two and got it. And then they kicked five field goals. Yeah. So, they were moving the ball all day, though. Like Sure. But, that's, but, and- but I'll tell you what, against the 49ers team, if you're settling for field goals, I, I think – 
I think that's a recipe to lose. Yeah. So, you know, that Jets defense is very good and it's very similar to the 49ers defense. They'll give you between the 20s, but then they'll clamp down. And that's kind of what the Jets defense did. And they just didn't have the offense to keep up, but the 49ers do. So it's going to be a fascinating matchup, but, you know, that's still three weeks away. Uh, yeah. But this Thursday, we're already jumping ahead. Right? Yeah. We're like, we're... Well, because it's, again, the Giants and the Cardinals. So yeah, I, we watched those two teams out. play today, and there's no reason to feel like this team. Now, obviously, if they overlook either one of those opponents, they can absolutely lose. But I don't I don't foresee that happening. They've got their eye on the prize. This team, this team knows this team knows who they are. This team knows what they want. And they go out every week and and do what they need to do to achieve that goal. And as long as they continue to do that, you know, like I said, they're going to be favored in in pretty much every game that they're in. But, you know, it is the NFL any given Sunday, Thursday. Saturday, Monday, whatever day, you know, they end up playing. But yeah, I I just don't have a whole lot to say about that Giants team because I don't they just haven't looked good at all no. on offense or defense. So uh it no, should again, be think- a it should be a relative cakewalk for the 49ers, but it is a short week. You know, those Thursday night games are wonky. Um mm-hmm. but but there's no reason to think that that this team shouldn't shouldn't end this week which started today uh at three and zero. yeah and i'll guess you know this team scores 30 points every week it seems like so i'm gonna say this game is gonna be 30 to 13 niners i'll say 34 to 10 niners because i just don't believe in that giants offense at all no neither do i so we're both thinking easy wins we're both thinking three and oh and the niners are rolling right now which is good so We'll see what happens. We'll be back. I don't know. I guess, I don't know, Friday, right? We'll probably talk about the game yep. after that. We'll probably do that. So, all right, guys. Thanks for listening. For Brian, I'm Al. Later.